Hello everyone, my name is TS Page, and today I am proud to present to you, in collaboration with the Pest Control Discord, the long-awaited, long-delayed Nest Guide video. As most of you guys know, the Nest is an in-game dungeon with a very good loot table, and while it doesn't have the most variety, it has two fantastic white bags, a full ST set, tier 14 armors, and drops a lot of potions. And on the topic of potions, this dungeon drops the most life out of any dungeon in the game currently. So if you're looking kind of low on those life potions or looking to max some characters, this is by far and unquestionably the best way to do so. Aside from the absolutely fantastic loot, there's a lot of scary enemies in the dungeon, but once you get used to it, it's really not that bad. So let's hop right in to this guide. So to start out the video, we're going to begin with the nest event itself. I'm going to try and keep this part as brief as possible because I know it's not a part of the actual dungeon, but it is necessary to open up and clear the dungeon legitimately without keys. Normally whenever this spawns in the realm, it's considered kind of a drag or an annoyance, but I assure you it's not that bad. Grab your knights, your huntresses, and let's get right into it. Once you arrive at the nest set piece itself, you're going to see a bunch of small nest colonies. In order to make your way to the actual boss fight of this set piece, you need to clear all of those nest colonies out, or at least clear a safe path to the boss itself. To clear these tiny nest colonies that surround the actual boss itself, all you need is a decent range character and you can actually shred them. They have extremely low health and defense is pretty negligible, so it's not actually a real challenge to clear them out. Once you've cleared out these set pieces and you're safe to push in, the figurehead itself will do some pretty basic shots that are really easy to dodge, but are otherwise safe to push in, giving you pretty free damage to push him to his next phase. Once you do push him to his next phase, you'll see him shoot at three little, you know, particles, and that will spawn the three bees that you'll then have to fight afterwards. These bees are not too hard on their own, but you have to fight them all simultaneously, and we'll get into that fight right now. So the bees do a lot of status effects and can be very hard to deal with in a small group if you're not prepared. But the great thing about it, knights can stun, archers can slow, and you negate a lot of the scary factors about them. While all three bees are alive, they're going to chase you around the set piece and you're going to have to just kind of drag them around and do damage as you best can. They can jump, they can kind of pin you in between trees and the surrounding environment, but if you're aware of your surroundings, they're not too bad to deal with, as I said, with slows and stuns. Now, once you've got all of these three on the outside and you're damaging them, try and kill either yellow or red first. The reason for this is because blue, in its big form, which you'll see later, can actually be stunned. Once you've pushed one of these three bees to a quote-unquote rage phase, which means it's close to dying, it will then charge at the players jumping, and with slows, it's not too bad, but if you're not paying attention and you don't have slows up, make sure to be careful. These jumps are very deadly and can, you know, insta-pop you. Now, once this is done, the two remaining bees will start to rotate around the set piece figurehead. Once this begins, all you need to do to really do damage is either wait for them to come to you, or start counter rotating and get damage in as quickly as possible. Really comfortable players can rotate around with them, similar to four copy phase on void, but just wait for them to come around, do damage to the one that's not blue, and it's pretty simple. Once one of them is low enough on health, they'll flash red and get ready to jump into the group how they did similar to first phase. All you gotta do, slow them, do some more damage, and by this point they're pretty low on health. Be aware of your surroundings and you'll be fine. Now you've got one bee remaining. This final bee is gonna go run to the middle, sit on that big old figurehead, suck up all of its energy, and basically make it go bye-bye. Once the bee does this and the centerpiece of the event disappears, there will then be a ring of shots shooting out in all directions. Knights, if you stun this, you reduce the shots by a significant amount, but it's not necessary. Just back out and wait it out. And as I said earlier, if you remember, I said that the blue bee should be the last one alive. This is because it is the only bee that can be stunned in its larger phase. So with that said, you greatly reduce the impact of the fight, or the stress of the fight, if you can stun it. All of the bees can be slowed though, making them much more manageable. If you don't have a knight, or you don't have the blue bee as the last alive, be prepared for some more shots of whatever color it is, and just be prepared to dodge. Overall though, it's not too bad, you should be fine, and if you have a range class, it'll be pretty trivial. Just stay back, stand back, and don't run over the damaging honey. The giant bee is the last portion of this event. It can drop the behemoth quiver, which is a great swap out for the archer. And it just so happens to also be super useful in the nest. And now that you're here, let's get right into the dungeon. There are two main ways of running the nests. 
One is running the dungeon in a small group of people, where only a few will make it to the end, which is a little bit more fun, or the other is joining a raiding discord, where the objective is to make sure that everyone who enters will get their loot as fast and efficiently as possible. And as a little footnote, full skips are under this category of big dungeon raids. The enemy that kills the most raiders are the maggots. Anyone unfortunate enough to sit on these fellers quickly understands how deadly they are. The combination of armor break shots and paralyze makes for a quick free character slot. While full clearing the dungeon, the maggots can be avoided easily by keeping your distance from the eggs that they hatch from. Standing on these eggs cause them to pop out instantly and shotgun you without any warning, similar to how the spider den spiders work or the crawling depth spiders work. Staying with the group though can make these maggots a joke due to the low amount of health they have. After they jump at the group, they will become vulnerable, making them really easy to clear out. The other enemies that cause a lot of new players to panic are the large colored bees. The most important tool that can be used against them is slows. It allows the group to focus fire and also keeps the bees from getting too close. Every bee behaves similarly during its first phase. After the players push the bees to their last phase, they'll head to the nearest spawner and grow in size. If there is no spawner nearby, they will move erratically. The most deadly bee while raged is the blue one. It'll fire a tornado of blue shots and then immediately jump to the nearest player. This phase can be decoyed, making the blue bee essentially useless. Slows also work and every bee can be stunned while transitioning to its last phase. The yellow bee will flash purple and then slowly start heading toward the nearest player, ready to sit on them. You can run from the yellow bee and kill it this way pretty easily unless you get paralyzed. On a melee, even if the raged yellow bee is sitting on top of you, you're safe. It's never good to panic Nexus when a yellow bee paralyzes you, unless you get armor broken, then in that case, yeah, you're dead. Red bees will start a tornado looking attack like blue, but instead of diving the group, it'll rotate around the nearest player. This can be extremely deadly and it's best to force the bee against a wall to prevent its rotation. Slowing them is the most effective thing you can do overall. The spawners don't do much. You can stun them in every phase except for rage. And if you stun it right before it rages, it'll only be able to get off a few shots before it's destroyed. Full skipping a nest is one of the most exhilarating things you can do in Rotmeg. Even though you're a part of a massive group, there's no assurance of your safety if you're not equipped to handle the challenge. One crucial tip that needs to be addressed before we start this segment is that you should never be shooting anything besides maggots during the full skip. Raged spawners and bees are infinitely harder to deal with than their full health variants. The start of a full skip nest should comprise of you waiting in spawn for your RL to map read. Once he's decided where to go, he'll instruct you to wait in a hallway and then he'll count down for when you should start. When the full skip begins, you want to make sure that you are listening to what direction the raid leader calls, and how specifically to get there. For example, if there's a spawner in the way of the group, he might call to go below it. The raid leader is very busy during a full skip, so you should respect him by listening to the calls that he makes. It is easier to be safer near the front of the group than the back. When in the front of the group, it is smart to activate maggots by shooting the eggs rather than standing on them, because standing on them can result in an immediate insta-pop. Good maggot control by Mystics is one of the most important aspects of a nest full skip. Going quickly in a full skip is actually safer than going slowly, so make sure that you bring a character that has some decent speed. Spawners result in a lot of deaths during full skips because people run right through them in panic. It is never the best option, even if the spawner is stunned. Try going around no matter what, it is also never a bad idea to Nexus if you feel like you could die in the next couple of seconds. Another tip is to play aggressively. If the RL tells you to power through a tough room, you should do it. Even if it feels like you'll certainly die, as long as the group pushes with you, it'll be perfectly fine. As long as you're in the front of the group, avoiding paralysis, listening to the RL, and playing a little aggressively, Full skip should be a piece of cake, except for when the map decides that everyone should die. But that's a part of the fun. Once you've managed to either full clear or full skip your way all the way to the boss, you will then encounter the Killer Bee Queen. The boss that ends most players' journeys. In this section of the video, I will show you this boss is not actually that scary and can be completed with ease given the correct knowledge. The boss starts by activating all the maggots in the room. At this point, it is best to get a slow on her so she does not sit on anyone. She can also be stunned during this first phase, and she will then spin around the room and shoot a shotgun that can be very deadly if she is on top of you. When she's pushed to her second phase, she'll choose one of three colors. These colors determine what attack she will use. This is known as the first color phase. If she chooses blue, she'll circle the outside of the arena, but her shots will do little damage. The group can easily damage her during this phase. If she chooses red, she'll chase the nearest player with a deadly shotgun. She can be slowed here, and if the group runs away from her, everyone will be fine. If she chooses yellow, she'll slowly creep towards the nearest player and paralyze them. If you're in a small group, this phase can easily cause people to nexus. 
you should try and avoid her at all costs in this situation. In a large group, you can stand still because she'll never actually sit on you. She'll only get close. If you don't push her to her next phase during one of these colors, she'll choose another one and then repeat the phase until enough damage is done. When pushed, she will flash white and move towards the center of the room. It is possible to stun her before she shoots all of her armor-breaking shots, and in a big enough group, she will not shoot at all during this phase if she is stunned properly. This phase is known as Skittles phase, and Skittles can also be dazed. It is easy to dodge during this phase, all you have to do is wiggle around in a small area, and you'll be fine. In the next rotation phase, she'll shoot out three colors of stars. The red armor breaks, the blue silences, and the yellow paralyzes. In a small group, dodging yellow is the priority because it forces you to tank all of the following shots. In a larger group, she shouldn't be able to shoot more than one round of shots. Although if she isn't slowed during this phase, the shots can even become unavoidable. The next phase is the second color phase. Before the phase starts, she will flash three colors and throw out some smaller bees. After she flashes blue, she will then flash white once. While she is flashing white, you can stun her, which makes whichever phase she chooses trivial. If you do not have a knight, it is best to keep her slowed. If she chooses blue, she will follow the nearest player, inflicting a lot of debuffs that cripple the group's damage. This phase is the worst for efficiency and can be deadly. If she chooses red, she will begin circling in the middle of the room quickly while firing out a lot of red shots from all four corners. If she is not slowed, the shots are extremely hard to dodge, and she fires a shotgun that can insta-kill characters that are not max life. The shotgun consists of three shots that do 220 damage each. If she chooses yellow, she will move to the center of the room. She can be dazed and damaged from the left side of the boss room. It is safe in a big group to tank this phase, but if you're in a small group, make sure you focus on dodging, as this phase can be really deadly. The next phase is the most infamous part of the boss. It's called the Stinger phase, and it can shred through any character almost instantly. The boss will move to the center and throw three spawners on the perimeter of the arena. She'll begin shooting above and below her, and the cone of her shots will increase in diameter until the players are left with only one quarter of the room to maneuver in. Standing in these shots will result in near instant death, so if you are caught in them, it's recommended to Nexus. The spawners will begin to shoot, and knights can stun them. It is tricky to dodge the shots of the spawner along with the boss, but this skill can be mastered in only a couple of runs. The spawners will also summon little bees that'll slow you, and if you are close to the wall of stingers, you'll most likely have to Nexus due to not being able to outrun it anymore. The spawners that you destroy in this phase will determine what color of bees will harass you during the final two phases. In smaller groups, it's recommended that you destroy the red and yellow spawners, because the blue bees are not very harmful. For big groups, it doesn't really matter, but red bees are the best for DPS. The second to last phase of the boss is called the third color phase. After she stops firing her stingers, the bees will come out of whatever spawners are left. She will then dive to one of the colored spawners, which will determine what phase she chooses next. If she chooses blue, she will flood the room with shots diving towards the nearest player. This is the worst phase because it can get a lot of damage in on players as well as ruining the DPS. It is best to decoy her during this phase and just let ranged classes gun it down. Also to note, the bees that spawned from the previous phase during this phase will rotate around her acting as a meat shield, so yeah, it's just blue's a bad damage phase. And if you want a little alliteration to make your life a little bit happier, next phase is red, and red is rotation. Red is actually great for damage because the shots themselves aren't too hard to dodge, nor are they too scary, and she just rotates around the room at a very measly pace and is super easy to damage her. So if you're in a group or in a small group, even solo, rotate with her, do some damage, and you might be able to push her in one phase. If she chooses yellow, she will then go to the center of the room and fire an underwhelming barrage of shots. In a small group, you will have to dodge, but in a large group, it is easily tanked. The colored bees, rather than sticking to the boss herself, will actually rotate around the outside of the arena during this phase, making it even easier to do damage. She does shoot dazed shots during this phase, but it's honestly not that bad, because the phase itself is just really low damage. And per usual with most of the boss fight, if you don't do enough damage during one of the colored phases, she will then switch to another color, and you'll have to push her out of this phase. Once you have pushed her out of this phase though, you will then enter the last phase. This phase is known as the chest phase, but on a small group it can be quite deadly. The queen bee will enter the middle of the room and the colored bees will circle around her. In a small group it's easy to become overwhelmed and get destroyed. In a large group the boss will die within seconds. But that's all for the boss. While it might sound like a lot, once you join a couple of runs, you'll start going on autopilot. And now that you've completed the boss, there's only one last thing to do. And you may have encountered this already on your way to the boss, but we figured we would cover it last since it's not necessary. And this is the treasure room. The treasure room is pretty easy to find as it's only two rooms off of the main path at any given point. 
It only spawns in a select few rooms and can only head up from the room that it spawns in. With that said, the treasure room is one of the easiest parts of the dungeon when done correctly. For many, it serves as a breath of air in the crazy dungeon, and the boss will only activate if a player enters the room. During a raid, you should wait until it is okay to enter because you could trap a lot of people outside of the room. Small little footnote as well, when you see the tea room, you'll see a little bit of blue leaking out from underneath the tiles, and sometimes you'll see a little blue tile on your minimap indicating the entrance to the tea room. Now, once it is safe to enter and you start the first phase, the beekeeper will come down from the computer and begin firing in the middle of the room. Keeping slow on him is recommended as it greatly reduces the chance that he sits on you. It'll also allow people to hit him really easily. He will throw out fire, which if sat on will armor break you and deal immense damage. The beekeeper will shred any armor broken target with his flamethrower, so it is best to avoid his fires completely. And before editing this video, I did not know that that right there, what he was holding, is a flamethrower, and I just have so much more love for the boss now, knowing that he holds an actual flamethrower in Realm. Anyways, during the second phase, there will be a lot of small bees that come out from the testing chambers, similar to the Mad Lab. With that said though, the bees are really trivial to deal with as they all have super low health, similar to maggots, and so if you're with a decent group, or you're with a small group even, they'll kind of just die as you start damaging the boss. The boss though during the second phase will start firing tentacles in four directions while rotating around the outside of the room. If he is not slowed during this phase, he can become kind of overwhelming, but even if he's not, just rotate with the boss and you'll be relatively safe. Once that is completed, you'll push him to his last two phases, which are practically a joke because the beekeeper can actually be stunned for the last two phases, so if you have a knight, these last two phases will be very easy. If no one can stun him during the third phase though, a decoy being placed next to him will do. He will spawn a lot of fire, which can be hard to avoid, so try and stay near the edges of the room. Simply do damage during this phase while avoiding the flames, and you should be good to go and get ready for the fourth and final phase. During his final phase, two bees will come out of the test chamber and circle around with him. If no one can stun during this phase, it is best to circle with him, going for hits when you find openings. Some flames from the previous phase could still be active, so it is best to circle when they despawn and make sure to avoid getting armor broken. Depending on the bees that are circling with the boss, this phase can be easier or harder just by small amounts. The yellow bees though, I would consider the hardest personally if you're not in a big group, simply because of paralyzes and a lot of heavy damage shotguns, so just be wary of that and try to avoid getting paralyzed. If the boss is not killed fast enough, the bees will start shooting some actually strange shotgun patterns, and it can be hard to finish the boss if this happens. The treasure room in the nest is a great way to rack up some free extra life and defense potions. And might I just say, if you need life and dex, running these nests, <laughs> oh, it'll fill you up real quick. But that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching this nest guide, and if you made it this far, you should be more than prepared to tackle it. My name is T.S. Page. All right. <laughs> I always wanted to do this. See ya. Hey, that's my...